Welcome, friends, to another exciting episode of A VGM Journey. And I'm your host, The Messenger. The track that we're playing in this week's show is Rise and Shine, Good Morning, from the game Gimmick. It was originally composed by Masashi Kagiyama, and this was arranged by R3. We're going to be doing things a little bit different on this show this week, where instead of covering video game music, we're going to cover a cover album of a video game soundtrack, specifically Gimmick 30th Anniversary OST, which this was a cover album by R3 celebrating the 30th anniversary of the game Gimmick. I actually somehow stumbled across this album a little bit after recording last week's show and I gave it a quick listen and I thought wow this is some really amazing stuff and I have to play it on the show immediately and I want to showcase a few of my favorite tracks from that album which they are also my favorite tracks from the original game as well so it's a little bit of a best of both worlds type of deal and let's say we talk a little more about it after this next track, and that is Happy Birthday, Superstar. <laughs> track that you just heard that was happy birthday superstar man that was some really good stuff and it definitely has the fun driving energy as the original track and what i really like about a lot of the tracks on the album is that r3 manages to find a good balance between sounding new but also sounding familiar as well and that these tracks are highly faithful to the originals. Of course, they use a lot of updated instruments compared to the Famicom. And he even incorporates some of the 8-bit original instruments in the tracks. But it definitely has that FM sound to it. And I will admit, I have never played the game. But the soundtrack has always really stuck with me in a way that I could easily say that it has one of the best 8-bit soundtracks in any game. And the main premise to the game is really simple as well, where you play as this green guy named Yumi Taro who has to rescue this little girl who you were given to her 
as a gift for her birthday. And she really loved Yumi Taro and her other toys get super jealous and kidnapped her and take her to another dimension, which I think that's a plot that it's fairly standard. But at the same time, I'm just thinking this is a little nutty, but it definitely keeps things simple. I think for this next track, I want to play something that I feel as though surpass the original which that is a very tall order and that track is calm seas and good weather <laughs> that you just heard that was calm seas and good weather i always thought the original was really good and that it was a highlight of the soundtrack but man this track really benefited from the updated instruments and i always thought the original tried to go for a latin beach vibe and i thought this track absolutely nailed that and the one section I kind of get some Mario Golf vibes from it. Because I could totally picture Motoi Sakuraba composing a track like that for... I would, I would say the original Mario Golf, but maybe even Mario Golf Super Rush. Definitely can hear that. You could definitely tell that R3 really loved the original. And I was wondering if they were thinking on how they would approach doing a cover. And I'm not sure if they, if they were just like, okay, I'm going to try to be faithful as much as possible. And that anyone that really liked the original, they would like this too. But I do wonder if they were also thinking, hey, what if I'm faithful, but I can do this better? And I think this track kind of falls into the latter kind of mindset. I really do think this is quite a bit better than the original. And the, and the original was really good, too. So this is, I would say, really great. This next track, it's quite a bit more rocking. And I think you guys are going to really, really like this. And that is Identity Believer Dreamweaver.
that rocking track that you just heard, that was Identity Believer Dream Weaver. Where do I even begin with that track? Well, I guess for starters, I really dug the Konami string hits sound in it. It sounds like it could belong in one of the TMNT games. And it definitely makes good use of the FM twangy sound. So I also thought that was very Rob Hubbard-esque, but a bit toned down. And I'm assuming that this track was played in a boss battle. So I definitely get boss battle vibes from it. Because I think overall, I find the track to be badass, but not totally in your face. And that you're just kind of in the moment of kicking ass. <laughs> and as much as I like that track, I'm a lot more excited for this next one. And just a quick backstory on this track. It was a standout track from the original soundtrack, and it was unused in the game, which really baffles me because this track is so good. And R3 did a really amazing job on this. And that track that I'm talking about is Strange Memories of Death. <laughs> track that you just heard that was strange memories of death and that's going to just about do it for the show this week if you like what you've been listening to have your friends check out the show on apple Podcasts, google Podcasts, spotify stitcher whatever podcatching service that you can think of i'm more than likely going to be on there you can email the show at vgmjourney at yahoo.com and you can also check us out on twitter at vgmjourney we're going to play things out with one more track. And before I get to that, I will say that R3, you did a really amazing job on this album. And don't worry, I am going to throw a link to your band camp in the description of the episode. So definitely check out Gimmick 30th Anniversary. 
there's a lot of good stuff that I didn't play on the episode. However, I will play this track, and it's very fitting that it will be the last song of the show, because this is the ending theme called Come On, Let's Go Home, Good Night. Have a good week, everyone.